You're listening to the Platte River Bard. Today, our episode is with an Omaha theater legendary favorite. We were lucky enough to chat with Dick Mueller, who opened the Firehouse Dinner Theater, May 12th, 1972, in the old market of downtown Omaha. Back in its day, the Firehouse was one of the best of equity theater in Omaha, and to commemorate all the great times there, Dick Mueller has published a book written by himself and 25 others who worked at the Firehouse. All of them share about their most memorable experiences. There was a time in which the Firehouse Dinner Theater grossed over $2 million a year. Will we ever see another era of equity theater in Omaha? One where creatives can make an actual living doing what they do best. One can only hope. In the meantime, we can reminisce about a time where theater in Omaha was king. Hello, hello, and welcome to the Platte River Bard. This is Chris Berger. And I'm Sherry Berger. And we are here today, we are here with Dick Mueller. Yay! And he is here going to talk to us about his uh, career a little bit, and also because he also has a book coming out Yay. called The Firehouse <laughs> Memoir. For and, and i got to get this all in because it's very important. For an entrepreneur in the arts, from nightclubs to theater, twas all showbiz to me, by Dick Mueller. Yay! Thank you very much for coming to talk with us here at Scooters. Thanks, Scooters. Well, thank you for the invite. <laughs> yes, this is such an honor to be able to spend this time with you. Well, it's kind of a new chapter for me, and you're the first people to pick up on. Yay! Wanting to talk about it. <laughs> I was so excited to hear that you were doing a book. I didn't know that you've been working on this. How long is it? Has, how long has it been in the works? Yeah, about, about a year. Of my life is in that. Really? Yeah. I started about a year ago. About a year. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, and I didn't know what it would turn into. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. I just started, as we talked earlier, moments that I did not want to write a book. That say you know, along this line, we did this, and then we did this, and then we did this, and then we did. This. I hate, uh, I hate that kind of book. Yeah. Sure, sure. So, um, I got fascinated with the notion of how moments, one moment in your life, can lead if you're if you're lucky enough to catch it, to so many other moments down the road. Mm-hmm. And that's what when I got that notion, then I started writing about moments that led to other moments. <clears throat> and uh, so it's sort of a montage. Um, now, I was very conscious. I did not want to leave anybody out of the book. So nobody is out of the book. <clears throat> but I, I, I hope nobody is offended because I don't write a story about them. Sure. I wrote stories about things who were problems that led to drama. Uh, <laughs> sure. But everybody that ever walked on that stage or everybody who ever worked backstage is in the book. So they're all represented, either uh, listing all the stage managers, assistant stage, everybody's there. Mm-hmm. I was very conscious of not wanting to leave somebody out. <clears throat> right. Though I was, you know, in, in the meat of what I wrote, I wrote about incidents or moments that led to other moments. Mm-hmm. So. Uh, and, you and I got other people. I've got guest writers. Uh, took the burden off me. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Yeah. I've got about 25, I think. Uh, oh, wow. People who wrote, people with a, f- a f- uh, past with the firehouse, and they wrote short, sometimes a little not so short, uh, stories about their times there. Oh, mm-hmm. nice. That's really cool. And you even <laughs> start with. Growing up in Omaha, well, so uh, go a little James yes, Lipton yeah. on you. You are from Omaha. Yes, I was. Well, <laughs> I was born in Columbus. Okay. And I uh, left Columbus, a babe in arms, and um, basically grew up in Omaha because my folks finally. Uh, my dad was a musician all his life, and uh, it was his trumpet that got him out of Columbus, mm. and it was his trumpet that I'm sure led to meeting my mother mm-hmm. uh, who was born up in uh, near Valentine, Nebraska on a ranch. Mm-hmm. Okay. And he was probably, this is, I wish I knew this, I wish he'd written a book. Uh, he, I'm sure they met at a dance hall because dad was right. playing with bands, touring. Sure. And that's, that's how they met. There was 
as a story about my brother told me this. He's a little older than I am, believe it or not. And uh, mm. supposedly my dad was playing in this dance hall. I assume it was in the Sand Hills in that area because I'm sure mom didn't, <laughs> she was young. Uh, anyway, supposedly the story goes, dad leaned down next to the, at the edge of the stage where the band was playing and asked this kid uh, who that girl was over there. And, and the kid says, um, yeah, it's my sister. Hmm. And that's how I end up calling that little kid my uncle, because oh. that was Lenny. Anyway, <laughs> so it was, they met there. They ended up settling in Omaha because of the Second World War. Dad got a job uh, because musicians, the, the, the traveling bands went away. Uh, and he was a good provider for his family. He ended up uh, grinding tools at the uh, bomber plant in Bel at Offutt mm -hmm. during the war. So we grew up, my first recollections really basically are um, when I was, I started school at Highland Elementary down in South Omaha. And that's where I, and then I moved, <laughs> I don't know how many schools I went to. My parents were, um, my mom was a, um, she kept the family moving. I don't know why, I think she got bored. <clears throat> and uh, so <laughs> and basically we moved all over town. I did many different schools until high school. I spent all my five high school years at Central. At Central, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah I was. And that's oh. where I met three other guys mm -hmm. that we somehow, I have no idea how it happened, but we started singing together. We didn't know each other. We were in the choir together, yeah. but uh, <clears throat> we would meet in room 215, I believe it was, which was a study hall on the second floor of the east side of the Central High there, and before school. We'd go there and meet before school, and uh, they had a little stage and went in with a piano, and we would, for some reason, we met there and started singing together. Mm -hmm. And that's where my show business life began. So that huh. group was called the Style Masters, mm -hmm. Style and Masters. your husband, your dad, played trumpet, but you played trombone. Well, I played I, at trombone. <laughs> <laughs> I was you decided uh, to sing instead. Played at trombone. Uh, interestingly, <laughs> when we got drafted into the army, we went. They drafted the quartet. Yeah. I mean, it was that's an interesting story. I don't, don't know how much I tell it in the book, but oh. it was all set up before we got drafted. We'd been putting the draft off for uh, uh, quite a while. <clears throat> and we were working in, um, I tell this in the book, we were actually, we just finished a great recording session at Capitol in Hollywood. <clears throat> and we went over to Palm Springs to a great club called the Chi Chi back then. <clears throat> and it was a good club with a good band. We had, it was great. And we played there a week. And during that week, we got two offers. Mm -hmm. One was to open at the Sands in Las Vegas, in the big room, opened for um, Gordon and Sheila McRae. Hmm. Wow! Who knows what that might have mo what that moment in yeah. our careers might have meant. But uh, the other offer we got was get our asses into the uh, the army because they were tired waiting for us. Okay. And fortunately, <clears throat> we ended up in the U.S. Army Field Band. Hmm. It, anyway, we ended up doing our. I, I spent a year and ten months and twenty-five days in the uh, in the army. Oh wow! Yeah. And uh, the group broke up. Actually, we changed the name of the group when we went east. And when we went, when we went east, we um, we changed from Capital to um, Epic. Okay. And our, the first, actually, the only record we actually put out uh, was called the Bachelors Club, and we liked that name better, so we changed our name. Ooh. If you look for us on Epic, it's The Bachelors. Oh. Um, and we recorded in their wonderful studio. Great oh, session. Oh, wow. Yeah. Unfortunately, the we had two great cuts. And, um, you know, this, here's a moment. Looking back, they the company, which was uh, Epic, which was part of, I think, Columbia <clears throat> at the time. Anyway, they, uh, they after we did our session of two songs, The Bachelor's Club and It's Funny on the other side, we went back to the Army, went back down to Washington where we were uh, stationed. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> and um, 
they got all excited. Dance crazes were big back then, you know. Uh, okay, and, yes. Uh, they got all excited and they had us come back up and do a song based called Do the Madison. And it was a terrible song, and, but they were all excited <laughs> about trying to cash in on this. So they dropped It's Funny, which I really think might be the best cut we ever did. Hmm. And they put out it, The Bachelor's Club. On the other side was uh, this Do the Madison. And, you know, maybe for another group it mm -hmm. would have been terrific. But we were not that kind of group. And it just didn't fit us. and it did, yeah. So it was kind of disappointing. And um, But they offered us um, a contract to do an album, which was a big step up because everything we'd put out up to that point was 45s. Okay. I think we had like four or five releases on Capitol. And um, unfortunately, we had just the one on Epic. But they offered us uh, the opportunity to do an album. And... Uh, we were approaching at the end of the service, our service obligation. <clears throat> Bob Larson and the group had already gotten married and left the group. We had a great replacement for him, Bob Hill. We like Bob's, I guess. <clears throat> and yeah. um, unfortunately, we at the, at the end of our service, we were trying to decide what to do. The music world had really, really changed. You'll appreciate this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> um, first. Presley came along and just shook everything up. And um, sh a few years later, the Beatles changed everything all again. And so groups like ours, which sang popular music, mm -hmm. and our heroes were the Mills Brothers and the yeah. Ames Brothers mm -hmm. and the Four Lads and the Crew Cuts. And uh, so we were trying to decide what we were going to do with our, were we going to go back to nightclubs? I loved working nightclubs. I just adored it. And we did that for from uh, 1955, basically, to uh, we got drafted in 59. We got drafted on April Fool's Day of oh, 1959. Really? <laughs> and then uh, we got out of the service in 61, and we just decided to hang it up. So I came back to Omaha after the service and um, <clears throat> tried to decide what to do with the rest of my life. So this, these were the years between 1959 and 1961. -ish. Well, 55, we, gra we, saw, uh, we graduated from Central. Yeah. We went to Sun Valley the next mm -hmm. morning and started okay. basically a so life of, of wandering. Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> we got drafted in 59. So yeah. for four years, we uh, toured the country doing playing nightclubs right. and recording yeah. and some concerts. It was fun. Yeah. Yeah. Now, the moment that you knew <coughs> that you liked theater, that happened later. How do you know this? <laughs> I did a little bit of research. Did you? I stalk a little bit. Well, yes. I write about that in the book. That's why <laughs> she's talking. And you haven't read the book yet. <laughs> I haven't. Yeah, I can't it, was, wait. it was kind of a, it was a moment in my yeah. life. Mm -hmm. We the group was in New York. We'd done a recording session, and for some reason, there was some time elapse, and um, I had done I had performed at Central High in the back row of the chorus of, um, I think it was the Mikado. That was my theater experience at high school. And mm -hmm. Central has a pretty uh, healthy yeah. history of theater, but I didn't get involved mm -hmm. in theater there. Yeah. But when, when we were in New York, I had this day off for a few hours, and I saw a marquee, and, and the, I noticed the theater district, and I bought a standing room only ticket to a show and I stood for three hours, wow. Elise easily three hours and you know it, it changed my life. Wow. And when I went in that, I don't know what I was expecting but I really considered the ultimate entertainment experience the nightclub stage mm -hmm. and uh, when I walked out three and a half hours later I had found something else. Yeah. Now this production, it was a Broadway production. Yeah, it was the original production of My Fair Lady. My Fair Lady. Yeah. How oh, can you do really? Yeah. How can you do better than it? Now yeah. it had played for n a number of years. Rex Harrison and Julie Andrews were long gone. Oh, okay. Okay. But, but uh, it, nevertheless, it changed my life. So that's interesting, though a standing room only ticket. Yeah. I oh. I don't think I've ever seen that before. That was common back yeah, then. Yeah, I probably spent about three dollars for it. Yeah. You know what a Broadway ticket is worth oh, today? Oh yeah, my God. I know hundreds. It's just crazy. Yeah, yeah. Back huh. then, 
I also second acted some, when I was living in New York for that year. Mm-hmm. I used to uh, occasionally second act. Do you know what that means? The second act. A show? Well, what you do is you go no. to the theater district, you look semi-dressed up, and you, um, at the intermission, the audience wanders out onto the stress sidewalk. Hmm. And uh, that's how they spend, because the lobbies are not big enough. Oh. So you in, insert yourself into that crowd, and uh, you, at some point you'll find a, a program laying on the ground or something, you pick up the program, and when the crowd goes back in, you go back in too. <laughs> and uh, you, find, you go to the restroom, because you don't know what seats are taken and what seats aren't taken. So you, uh, you go to the restroom so the <laughs> audience is seated, and then you come back in and you find an empty seat, and you sit down and watch the second act. Now, <laughs> I saw this. Got it. I saw the second act <laughs> That's of fantastic. Ben Franklin in Paris twice. <laughs> I never saw the first act, All right. <laughs> but I saw Rick, Robert Preston do that wonderful speech Robert about the... Uh, Excellent. ...about the fly that was caught in a wine jug for, yeah. <laughs> that, and you know that must have been your love for Music Man because I know that was the first Firehouse uh, dinner theater production I saw well it was <laughs> one of, it was one of the last productions yeah. at the Firehouse that, that yeah. I did yeah. Mm. yeah and so so after you came back from New York and you had this experience you ended up doing theater here in town and a little bit outside of town too yeah, I, um, I, I, I had all this experience on stage, and I, 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 I guess I had a leg up at auditions. The Playhouse, <clears throat> I went to an audition. I don't know how I met the Filberts, the theater people, and I kind of fell in with the crowd somehow. <clears throat> can't remember how. And um, I went to an audition at the Playhouse, and they cast me as some kind of a role in... Uh, uh, the pajama game, I think it was, and um, <laughs> the only show I've ever dropped out of. I thought I was gonna. I thought it might be better to sing in some bar in town, so I dropped out of that production. I'm kind of, I'm not proud of that, but I, I don't. I wasn't playing a part that left him high and dry. I'm sure. Anyway, and then um, I did not do the the nightclub thing again, but um, then I did. I, uh, West Side Story was really my actually the first thing I ever did was at, at the the Red Lion which was a bar <laughs> on Farnham Street yeah. and a tiny little place, a jazz club <clears throat> and um, Schoenbaum was, who was he was doing they were doing theater, that couple he ended up uh, managing the Guthrie oh. I mean if you know what the Guthrie is it's to me it's probably one of the premier theater groups in town, in, in Minneapolis, yeah. in the country. Yeah. Anyway, uh, we used to have to schlep the grand piano off the stage, and, and we did a Sunday night show, and that one show, and that's the first time I was ever, I played a role in, I played Pedro, I think, and I uh, oh, okay. can't remember the name of the show. Uh, hmm. It escapes me at the moment. A tiny little thing. Mm-hmm. And, and then the next thing I did was Tony in West Side Story over at Shauna Claire. Okay. And that led to um, doing um, <laughs> the Playhouse, the big show, Bye Bye Birdie yep. at the Playhouse. <clears throat> and that just, I just went from one show to the next I, uh, with all the theater groups in town. Yeah. Yeah. And then you won the Fonda McGuire Award for Man of La Mancha. Yeah, Adam Mary Jane TV. and I did Man of La Mancha yeah. and uh, got all kinds of accolades. It was yeah. great. And That's the last thing I did. And then you won um, the the Tourism Honor Award, the Henry Fonda oh. Award. <clears throat> well, that was that was not for my acting. That was for the Firehouse. The firehouse. Actually, the Firehouse yeah. won that. We we made our uh, we enter, entered a contest and they picked us and and uh, yeah, it was a great honor. <clears throat> So the firehouse actually came to be in 1972, I think right. I read. May 12th, May 12th. Yeah. Okay. So how, what made you decide that you wanted to add um, food to theater? Did you see a lot well, of dinner I theater had, before? Um, I had, uh, <laughs> I had um, somehow, I had a friend here, and he was somehow involved with the food at a great theater that was being built in Minneapolis, Chan Hessen. And uh, 
I joined what what was the original company at Chanhassen. Um, and um, that was my first experience with dinner theater. I mean, it's it may very well, it probably is the premier facility in the country for dinner theater. It's beautiful. And I worked there about a year <clears throat> doing, it was great back then because now they, they run shows a year. But back then they ran shows like the Firehouse did for mm -hmm. six, eight weeks, you know. So it was great to work there as an actor because I must have done, I don't know, three or four or five shows there. Right. Six shows maybe in that year. Mm -hmm. uh, so that was my first experience with dinner theater. But uh, there were, when they opened, when I went up there, I talk about this in the book, <clears throat> there was not a roof on the place. It was, see, I think it seated 600 people. Mm -hmm. And we rehearsed for three weeks for the opening show mm -hmm. out in a shed, paint shed, not a very good atmosphere for rehearsing. But anyway, mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> but they had at one point, I think, at least four theaters in that complex. Yeah. I don't know what it is now. Probably yeah. just the one. But it was a great facility, and I love mm -hmm. the people who started it. Mm -hmm. They were great. So you had, the 70s were, were very good for the firehouse, and you were, so pe for people <coughs> who are listening that are younger than Chris and I, the firehouse is the only equity theater that has been in Omaha. Is it really? Hmm. I didn't know that. Uh, that I'm aware of. That people could actually go and be they a must have had a contract pay their bills. Pardon? Well, yeah, it was, <laughs> but it was great back then. Omaha yeah. had three professional houses operating, with a combined oh. total of twelve hundred seats, and those three theaters alone were uh, doing eight shows a week. So is that the Playhouse yeah. and Chanticleer? No, no, that was the. Firehouse, the West Roads Dinner Theater, West and the Talk of the Town Dinner Theater. I don't uh, know those. Okay. Between the three places, we had 1,200 seats, and we were all, yeah. I mean, those places must have had contracts with equity. Now, I don't know what their contract was, <clears throat> but because uh, the West Roads, they used stars. Mm. They were sort of like what we talked about. What has become yeah, the, the situation at the uh, the new theater up there? Yeah. There's yeah, <clears throat> um, and, and and I'm sure uh, Dick Solowitz worked at all three of them, and he mm -hmm. was an equity actor. So those places must have had some kind of a, an arrangement with equity too. For sure, I see. Yeah. And that's and that's how when you helped found what is now the Theater Arts Guild. <laughs> well, Omaha. that was long before the Firehouse came along. That was yeah. when I was doing community theater. Okay. Mag Metropolitan Art. Our, our award at the end of the year was called the Maggie. The Maggie. The Maggie. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. So that's probably why everyone really gravitated because there was just everyone was able to work. Can you imagine? Oh, we had. Yeah. I mean, you know, not only the, the theater, but the, the the brigade, our singing waiters and waitresses. They did a hell of a show, mm -hmm. and they made probably more money than the actors were making back then. It was it was a mecca for talent. Yeah, and a lot of that talent is still around. I mean, even Dave Winger is still, mm -hmm. he's, he's doing radio. Oh and, yeah. And all yeah. of that, so still able to find. But they were good years in Omaha for theater. It, 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 I get a chuckle out of the fact that, <clears throat> you know, there's a lot of, if you look at, there used to be a newspaper in town, but you look at the listings of the shows, and there's a lot, Yeah, and they think, it's really great in Omaha now, but they have no idea no. what it was, you know, what it was really like. When right. But I had a dear friend, an old guy named um, Rudyard Norton, who used to tell me that in his time, there were 17 theaters in downtown Omaha. Really? Yeah. Mm. Yes. Equity theaters. Well, I, I have no idea. I mean, these were probably vaudeville houses, and some oh, of them were showing movies. Right. Yeah. Uh, like where along, was. you know, but there were mm -hmm. some of them were doing well. When Henry Fonda brought Mr. Roberts to Omaha, they worked at the Omaha Theater. Mm -hmm. You know, do you know where that was? That was on yeah. on Douglas, I think, about between Fifteenth and Sixteenth, somewhere in there. I tried to save it. So just north of Old Market? No, we're just north of uh, the Twin Towers in there. The Twin Towers, th that was why it got torn down. They wanted a parking lot. 
so they tore this beautiful movie house. But it wasn't a. It was like the Orpheum was built as a vaudeville house. Yeah. And the, the right. or, and actually the Omaha Theater. I loved it more than the Orpheum because it was shallower. It was. Okay. It held a lot of people, but mm-hmm. if you stood in that down in the, it was it was intimate compared mm-hmm. to the Orpheum. Uh, but those places all over the Paramount. They just, you know, they had dressing rooms backstage. They, yeah. There was, but my friend told me in his time, there were seventeen theaters in downtown Omaha. Wow, I didn't know. Oh, but so we, I thought it was great when we had three houses, right? Plus all the community theater in town. Yes. Right. What do you think of theater now in Omaha? Well, I, you know, I'm, I'm not a judge because I don't know what's going on. I am, yeah. <clears throat> I'm really off the grid. Um, so I don't know what they're doing. Mm. Um, I have a a hunch they're not doing very well, um, but I, I wish them well. Mm-hmm. Um, interesting in the book, um, I wandered into, it went places I had no idea it was going to go. Mm. As I said, I had no plan when I started writing it. <laughs> but it wandered into... Um, a discussion, an idea. I, it was like the clouds opened up as I was writing. I mean, I was, I think I solved something that I'd pondered for at least 50 years. Mm-hmm. And I um, developed, I, at least I am hoping that I teased it enough in the book to spawn a conversation with people about how to really fund the arts mm-hmm. in a way that would level the field and, and make it put the put the emphasis back on where I think theater groups their emphasis should be and that is on the audience hmm. attracting an audience entertaining an audience and maintaining an audience anyway I think they've wandered too far you know to that I don't know I, I really don't know what's going on so I don't want to make any big judgments but <clears throat> I did because I uh, it wasn't a level playing field yeah we were a for pro- for profit theater, mm-hmm. and unfortunately, in our t- world today, in this world, for profit has almost become a dirty word. Yeah, and right. uh, you know, the, I think that's that's where they've wandered into. And uh, I think it wasn't a level playing field. And I, my idea that I've stumbled into while I'm writing this book, I think would not only be level the playing field. But I think it would be a renaissance for arts in Omaha. Mm-hmm. And if it was a renaissance for arts in Omaha, why wouldn't it work in Kansas City, Minneapolis, yeah. any other city? Mm-hmm. So anyway, that's my great hope, is uh, what might come from that idea. Mm-hmm. And it'd have to be a living <coughs> wage. I mean, it would have to be something that people can actually pay the bills Well, I don't focus on that. I focus gas. on the audience. I focus on tying the funding that or- arts organizations get to their ability to attract an audience, and that's and, and once you do that, I also level the playing field. I, I eliminate the the, di- the the dividing line between for profit and non profit. Mm-hmm. Non profit. It's motherhood, apple pie, and Chevrolet in my life. <laughs> uh, it's all good, nonprofit, you know. Well, this country was built on the Alter Hiss kind of story of uh, there's that kind of um, elevated the for profit or the making good mm-hmm. rather than getting good at raising money. Right. Yep. Or writing grants and all of that. Yeah, yeah you don't. Absolutely. If you if you do your job well, you don't need those people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, I don't eliminate those people, but um, in my idea. But uh, that's where I, in writing the book, like I say, I started off. I had no idea I was going, and I I think I covered some interesting moments in the theater's life. But I also lay out this challenge. Did you notice the four? people I have on the back of the book. No. Read the uh, mm-hmm. quotes on the back of the book. <clears throat> oh, William Buckley Jr. from the National Review. Mm. 
Dear Mr. Mueller, how I wish half the people who insist they are writers wrote half as well. I have sent your good essay along to our editors and shall hope that they'll find space for a story in the subject you'll be willing to annoy lots of people by no. <laughs> being available for quotation. And this other one's Josh Logan. Oh, yep, you directed three or four he with directed, him. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, for the Firehouse. Yeah. Uh, right, yeah, and he's passed. This was a couple of years before. Well, he those, passed. those people are all dead, so they can't yeah. deny what they've uh, what I've put on the cover. <laughs> <laughs> to the good people of Omaha, my friend Dick Mueller has spent the past 15 years producing quality professional theater in your city, his city. I have per been personally involved in a number of projects at his Firehouse Theater, and I find it a splendid theater. I'm very interested in doing anything Dick chooses to do. Oh, that's so sweet. And you've got one from Harold Howe Prince. Thank you for your comments. They're on the mark and encouraging. Thanks for your comments. Occasionally, I get tired of hearing myself. However, these things must be said, and there's so much res reluctance to hearing them. Now, do you know what that's a reason? I'll, I'll tell you what. Uh -uh. I saw him on a Sunday morning show, and he was, you know, he was, you know who he was. I don't. Well. Hal Prince. Hal Prince. He was, you know who Josh Logan was. Josh yes. Logan was the king of Broadway for a period, many years. Yeah. Hal Prince was the king that followed. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that. Yeah. Um, I can't. Yeah, you, you look, go Google him. So he did, you, he did you, Broadway. You recognized him as soon as you saw him. Phantom oh. of the Opera. Oh, you know Sweeney him. Sweeney okay. Todd. Yeah. Oh, okay, oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And on and on. Sorry, and on. I guess I should if know If you that. saw him, you would recognize him. <laughs> anyway, I saw him on I saw him on that morning show, and he was there, kind of kvetching about what we were all talking about recently about the the state of the arts. Yeah, and it prompted me to write him along the same thing that I've been mulling for fifty, sixty years, um, and that's his response to what I sent oh. him. And, uh, we had two or three. Uh, I never met him, but we had two or three letters back and forth. Interesting. And then. Uh, um, I don't don't read them all, but yeah, Dale Wasserman. Dale Wasserman, you know who he is, Man of La Mancha. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Uh, one what flew a, over the cuckoo's nest. What a great! How awesome is that? <coughs> I'm not surprised that you have made the decision to take the Firehouse Theater nonprofit. Professional theaters in the country have fallen in hard times. Less and less, it's possible for them to survive without civic support. See, we were we were all talking. Hal Prince, mm -hmm. Dale Wasserman, Josh Logan. We were all talking about the. The state of the arts in yeah. America, and um, during this time that you were deciding on whether or not you wanted to be for profit, or well, we ended up going nonprofit because I didn't see any route that, uh, and we were on the road to that. And looking back, you know, it uh, wasn't wouldn't have been a good fit for me, but it, it made it might have saved the theater, and that's that was to, my purpose to stay for profit. <clears throat> no, no, to to go non to go nonprofit. Um, anyway. It, it ultimately didn't work out because, um, well, it's in the book. You can. I can't wait to read the yeah. book. I'm holding it, but I can't take it home, y'all. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but I will because one of the things we want to talk about is your book launch event. Yes. It's coming up. A week from tomorrow. April 21st yep. at the Upstream Brewing Company. And you know what that place is? used to be the Firehouse that was Dinner the fire Theater. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, yeah. It was a firehouse before that. And uh, <coughs> it will be from 2 to 5. And there's going to be some video presentation as well. Well, we've, we're putting together a loop, you know. Yeah. Like you go to funerals or weddings, <laughs> and they play uh, a video screen with loops. And um, this will be a compilation of pictures of oh. stage productions interspersed with, with clips uh -huh. of... Um, as I said earlier, we've got uh, T Christy Tucker doing a sh uh, number in, in Guys and Dolls. I do a couple numbers. Pat Keys, my wife. Uh, Mary Jane, my ex-wife, is yeah. there. Um, there's even a, a little bit of uh, Don Sparks doing oh, uh, wow. Sneaky Fitch. So those will be interspersed. Mm -hmm. They were all pilfered illegally <laughs> as far as the union is concerned. <clears throat> right. But uh, thank God we... Uh, we did it yeah. because uh, we've got those, and I guarantee right. the people, if they're there, will love seeing what they did Absolutely. 40 years ago. Absolutely, and I think it's something that 
everyone should should know about the firehouse and what the firehouse did for for oh this my town. Gosh, yes. And some of just the, the great people that are still working in the arts that yeah. that started there. Well, it was a good time. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> your your wife Patricia, you married her after the firehouse. Well, I think kind of. Yeah, I guess it was. <laughs> so she's had to kind of learn all of this with you. And no, well, she worked there. She, oh, okay. she, 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 worked, yeah. she was. Uh, you mentioned um, Music Man. Yeah. She was married. She, okay. Oh, hey. she, was in she did a number of shows. Yeah. Okay. Right. So she she was aware. Okay. Yeah. I was thinking you got married like early '90s or something. So I don't know what I was thinking. I can't. <laughs> anyway, yeah. Yeah. Oh, this is so exciting. Well, thank you. And I'm just I'm just so yeah. honored to meet you because your story has mm-hmm. been in in my life for really? as long as I can remember. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. Cuz what are you? 21? <laughs> yes, exactly. 21. <laughs> right around there. You no. Know, not <laughs> Yeah, uh, I recall, you know, going to the firehouse and um, just hearing all of these stories. And Did I tell you if you start me, I just keep going? I love I know. it. I absolutely <clears throat> love it. This is what we're here for. Yeah, good. We will hopefully be there with you on the 21st at Upstream Brewery. I think so. Uh, for your book launch. How exciting. You'll yeah, be there to sign copies. they're actually hosting the event for us. So, I mean. Oh, that's so nice. You know, uh, what they make on the bar. I don't know if they'll make their. But they're actually yeah. going right. to put out some something to nibble on and, uh, and they're hosting. You know, Ron Samuelson manages, he's the uh, managing partner oh. of the Upstream. Okay. And he's actually in the book oh, as a guest he? writer because he started his career in uh, restaurants in the wine cellar, which was our oh. hangout in the basement of the firehouse. Wow. Okay. So we go back a ways. And I recall we, awesome. we had lunch there with Howard one day on the front In the Upstream? Porch. Yeah. And he was telling us on the where front porch. Used you to mean be. the outside? Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. I, you know the history behind that. Well, he was telling us <clears throat> kind of where things used to be, the stairs and all of that, as we were out. Well, there. let's talk about the outside, the sidewalk cafe. Oh no! Oh, right. Sidewalk cafes where we, everybody mm-hmm. we just knew it was illegal in Omaha to eat outdoors. Mm-hmm. And Rusty Harmson and I, we were good friends, <clears throat> and um, he ended up opening restaurants all over town. Mm-hmm. He had the uh, the spaghetti works at that time, and he had the toad, Mr. Toad. No, and uh, we got together, and we really wanted to bring sidewalk cafes to Omaha. Yeah. And uh, but it was e- illegal. Isn't that crazy? Mm-hmm. What a crazy. Think, yeah. Well, we rule. we leaned on Mike Boyle, who was the mayor at the time, mm-hmm. and he was a good guy, and he invited us up. I remember it was the day of a huge blizzard, and we met in his office, and he had all of the heads of the department of the city there in his office. And there's a blizzard outside the windows, and we're there to talk about eating outdoors. Yeah, right. And how we could get that law changed. As it turned out, there was no law against sidewalk cafes. Oh, really? It was that the man in charge of the health department Uh, had a personal... Didn't like it. He didn't like... He f- feared flies or something. Oh. So he had enough power that for years and years it was assumed in Omaha that it was illegal. So we, Rusty opened a sidewalk cafe at Mr. Toad, and I opened that one at the wine cellar on the corner. And I think the Mr. Toad one is still there, yeah, isn't it's it? Still yeah, there. Both, they're both still there. Oh, Those great. are the original outdoor restaurants or outdoor eateries in Omaha. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Thanks to Mike Boyle. That's great. I have a picture with him. I will bring it. Oh, yeah? oh. That we took at Firehouse that night. I will bring it. Yeah. To the, to the event on the 21st. Well, I we'll look forward to it. <laughs> thank you so That's much incredible. for your time. Thank you. We are yes, so thank you very honored much. to talk to you. And everyone, rush out and get your book and come to the book opening on April 21st. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. The Firehouse Memoir... For an entrepreneur in the arts, from nightclubs to theater, twas all showbiz to me. We'll have a book launch at the Old Firehouse, now the Upstream Brewery, on Sunday, April 21st, from 2 to 5 p.m. Stop on in to what is sure to be a festive reunion at the book launch, get a signed copy, and see so many of the people who made the Firehouse successful.
Thank you for listening and supporting the arts in the Platte River area and beyond. Please subscribe to our podcast so you are sure to catch all of our future episodes and join us on social media. See you next time on the Platte River Bard.